Welcome to Happy Talks with Dr. Alice and Donovan. Dr. Alice Fong is a holistic, naturopathic doctor and founder of Amor de Soi Wellness. And Donovan Jensen is a software engineer and founder of HowToHappy.com. Together, they're out to cause more happiness in the world. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Happy Talks. My name is Dr. Alice, and this is my lovely co-host, Donovan. And today, I have a very special guest, Lindsay Gordon, who is my friend and a career coach for the analytically-minded people who want to stop doing what they think is right in their career and start doing what is right for them. Please welcome Lindsay. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. So happy to be here. Awesome. Awesome. Great. So why don't we get started with our usual question and you tell us about your story into becoming a career coach. What was the path and journey? Sure. So I always like to tell the version of the story that is, I had no idea this was the plan because (laughs) sometimes when we talk to people who are running their own business or doing something that they love, we love to be like, oh, well, that person just always knew. Right. Mm -hmm. And so in my case, I always like to be really clear. I had no idea this was the plan. This is my third career change so far, Mm -hmm. looking forward to what my next ones are going to be, but it, I have had a very kind of jumbled path so far. And so I like to share about that because I think that most of us actually have that. And so I started in engineering, a very logical place for a career coach to be. Um, did recycled water engineering for a little bit. And then I ended up completely falling into technical support at Google and discovered that I am one of the really weird humans that loves technical support. Like to me, it's like engineering plus people. And I just, I absolutely loved it. And while I was at Google, I took over the onboarding and training for my team and was Uh, working with these new hires every day and people were coming in and saying like, oh my gosh, I am so stressed about my career. I don't know how to have conversations with my manager. I don't know what I actually want to be doing. And so I was, you know, on the side having all these conversations about career and how stressed people were. And people kept saying to me like, oh, you should be a coach. And I had no idea what that meant. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that I always tell people to to do in that case is like, go test it out somehow. So Mm -hmm. I said, okay, people are saying I might be a good coach. I went and took one course and was like, oh, this is awesome. Like, I didn't know there were actual skills in what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. So ended up kind of doing that training. Mm -hmm. My plan was to move to a different team at Google to be able to do career development internally. Mm -hmm. But people started popping up and saying, hey, are you taking clients yet? And I have people to refer to you. Mm -hmm. And so again, completely fell into it, but followed these little nudges of, huh, I wonder if this is interesting. And so now here we are, I've been running this business for five years and I kind of use my background as an engineer to help people make choices that are going to feel really good to them in a super practical and structured way. Awesome. So as I was listening uh, I heard a couple different things that I'm hoping we'll get to touch on as we uh, go through the conversation. But one of the things that stood out was these nudges, right? That you had heard from other people. And it sounded like these nudges were pretty specific in terms of like, oh, you would be good at coaching. Mm-hmm. I'm curious what you think uh, the difference is between like you actually heard those and moved on those as opposed to some other people Um that, that may get those kinds of nudges, but don't. Yeah, I think one of the things I like to talk about a lot, and this comes from the book, Designing Your Life, is kind of the idea of energy giving and energy draining activities. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's different, right? We get a lot of thoughts about what we should do in our career. Let's be very clear about like all the pressure that exists for mm-hmm. what we should want to do, how work should appear to us. So a lot of, we do get a lot of kind of external thoughts as to what we should be doing. But I think if you can pair that with what is actually energy giving for you, that can be really helpful to see like, okay, I got this external nudge and, oh, interesting. It does feel energy giving to me. Um, Maybe I will follow through with it and just see. So that I think is the first piece. And the second piece I would say is 
we kind of get this messaging of the point is to have it figured out, right? Like you are behind if you don't know what the answer is, you are doing it wrong if you don't have your five-year plan. And so sometimes then when we get these nudges, we can't see them as like, oh, do I want to go maybe try this out and be curious and explore? It's like, do I know if that is the direction that I want to take for the next five years? And then it's hard to make that decision because we have no idea if that's the answer. So I think if there's like a way to approach it with a little bit more curiosity, exploration, um, giving yourself the grace to try things out, mm. I I think that will also help people be able to take some committing, committing to this for the rest yeah, of Yeah, I think year. that makes a lot of sense. And that is another one of the things that I kind of honed in on from your journey is finding a small piece to kind of step out and start. Because I think, uh, I know from talking to people, a lot of people are not happy with what they're doing, uh, but they don't necessarily see a path into the thing they want to be doing. So I really like that you were able to share kind of that journey of well, taking a class getting a couple clients, then, you know, kind of this gradual transition, yeah. because I think there's this idea of, oh, well, here are my options, stay in this thing I don't really like, or burn everything and start over and go head down and pray that I make enough money to survive and not starve. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Burn it all down, stressful. Pay, pay all my money to go get an MBA, like make a complete transition without knowing it's the right thing for me. Like mm-hmm. that's not actually how we do it. We do it in <laughs> tiny little ways. So yes, completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, for people that are in jobs that they're not fully satisfied or with, or they're not fulfilled in, you know, how, how can they feel better about their job or what, obviously don't burn down the bridges, but like, where do, where do people start? What, what's your starting point with them? Yeah. So I want to tell kind of like a quick story before I give the answer. So I, most of the people who come to me are unhappy in their job. And Mm -hmm. some people are at the phase of like, burn it down. I hate my career. I hate the job. I hate the company. Like I'm ready to rage quit at any moment. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And after working with me or during working with me, more than 50% of people who come to me in that place Mm -hmm. choose to still be in the same place at the end of our engagement, which blows my mind. It continually blows my mind. It keeps happening, but I think there is so much that can change about our mindset Mm. about our understanding of what our job means to us, about our understanding of what's important to us in life and how work fits into that. Mm. And so I just want to give people hope that actually, if you feel like you need to rage quit at any moment, there are actually a lot of things that you can do to help shift that mindset. So Mm. a couple of things, kind of the starting points that I would start with. Number one, I always like to help people release the pressure that they feel. Mm -hmm. because if we feel a lot of pressure that my job isn't shiny or my job is shiny, but it's, you know, but I should be doing this other thing. Mm -hmm. Um, if we feel like we're behind, if we feel like we should constantly be climbing the ladder, even though that's not what really what we want, having Mm -hmm. all of those pressures can make us feel like, Oh, I should be doing something else. So step number one, start to identify what the pressures are that are surrounding you. And there's a great phrase called the noise, which comes from the book roadmap. Mm -hmm. And they define the noise as any, um, any like recommendations that come at you that Mm -hmm. don't take your individual personality into account. Mm -hmm. So that could come from society that could come from family who loves us dearly that -hmm. could come from friends, but it might not actually be the right advice. Mm -hmm. So if we can start to identify what some of those pressures are Mm -hmm. and we can really look for, okay, what do I want? How do I actually feel about this? Like boring job that I'm in, if it works for you, awesome. Um, but we need to identify that like, oh, it's the external pressure that I should be doing something shinier. Um, I think the next great place to look is understanding what is a good fit for you. So looking for what actually gives you energy, how can you do more of that in your job? Mm -hmm. What drains your energy? How can you do less of that? Uh, what are your strengths and what of your work is aligned with that and what really isn't aligned with that. 
And then when you have this knowledge of what's important, then you can have all kinds of great conversations with manager, leadership, whoever it is to say, look, I notice I am really energized by this aspect of my job. Can you look out for more ways for me to do more of that? So you can start to get other people on board of, yeah, look out for these opportunities for me to do more of the things that feel really good to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, it sounds like there's a really important piece there of kind of being able to plant your flag somewhere or have some idea of the kinds of things that you like and dislike, because otherwise the external pressures, if you don't have that kind of grounding, will just push you around in whatever direction they happen to show up. And it seems like that's when you end up at the point you were talking about where you're ready to just be done. Um, It seems like if and, and you can fill in the details there. I'd be curious how you feel. But it seems like if you get a grasp on that before you're at that breaking point, it's a lot easier to kind of pull out or hone in on the things that you really do enjoy and try to amplify the amount of time you get to spend there. It may or may not be your best perfect long-term opportunity. Yeah. But as we were talking about before with like just giving giving up on everything and burning the bridges and letting everything go, it, it, you can at least get to a position that's tenable. Uh, I would be curious to hear kind of your thoughts around, let's say I'm in that position. Let's say I have this job. I don't really like it. I figured out how to kind of make it work, right? I'm working with my manager to do as much of what I like as I can, but it's still not really working for me. How do you think about a situation like that? Yep. So I love helping people dream again. Mm -hmm. kind of one step. (laughs) I feel like as adults, Mm -hmm. we do not get to just like dream about Mm -hmm. what we might do next, what we might be interested in. And so I always want to have that be kind of the first step of (laughs) just even make a list of some of the things that you have considered doing in your life. Mm -hmm. And it's not about being practical. It's not about you have to do this for a job. It's not about this needs to cover all of your expenses, Mm -hmm. but I want you to at least start thinking about Mm -hmm. like, what are the things that feel fun to you? And then it's all about the experimentation. Mm -hmm. So um, there's another great framework from the book, Designing Your Life. They're going to talk about, there are three ways that you can start to explore. You can get curious you can talk to people and you can try stuff. So for example, I had a client who, um, as we were working together, discovered that like counseling was something that kept coming up over and over again. And she was like, this is so interesting. I have considered being a grief counselor, but I didn't really know if it fit with my strengths. So for her, Number one, get curious, started to research, like, what does it really look like to be a grief counselor? Does that actually sound like a right fit for me? Um, Number two, talk to people. Okay. Find one person in your sphere who's doing this thing that you think could be interesting and have a conversation with them about, I would love to hear what is it like to actually do this and then try stuff. So for this client, she said, okay, how can I test it out again? As you said, Donovan, without quitting your job, without needing to like fully transition into this thing that I'm not sure I want yet, but she started volunteering for Mm -hmm. a crisis hotline Mm -hmm. to see like, okay, this is the smallest way that I can test this out Mm -hmm. to see if I like it. And then we follow all the other things of like, is this actually energy giving? Do I feel like this actually aligns with um, the the contribution I want to make? So I think that lens of curiosity, getting to dream, allowing yourself to experiment is how I would really start to think about finding that stepping stone to the next thing. Mm. Yeah, that's a really good point that you made. And I think that's a a great way to like test it out without going all in for the deep end. Um, That's a great idea. I love it. And actually, I wanted to touch on something you said earlier about mindset, which is so important. And I'd be curious because actually I, you know, a, a, a pattern I've noticed in my significant other is that he, he complains about like every job and he just doesn't like, there's always something wrong with that job. And it's like, you know, maybe it's not necessarily 
the career itself. It's, I think it is the outlook in your perception of things. And so I was just thinking, you know, maybe if you find a, a purpose, a reason to go into work, something more than just a paycheck, then maybe you'll be enlivened by that. And so it's not so unbearable every day that you go and you're not so stressed out. Um, I'd be curious about like, what would you say to people who are kind of feeling like, oh, I don't, I feel like I, I try things and it's, it's not, I don't, I don't think I like anything <laughs> or, like nothing seems to be the right fit or anything. Yeah. Yeah. This is such a common experience <laughs> and I have so much empathy for people who are in that space. So just know that that is a very common experience. Mm. I think that usually points to not having clarity for yourself about Mm -hmm. what is important Mm -hmm. because I can find something wrong about all kinds of things. But the question that I would love for people to be able to answer is, is that thing that's wrong about this thing actually important to me? Mm -hmm. So the more that you can understand, like, you know, well, this, this job is remote and it's like, okay, does, is that saying that, um, uh, relationships are really important to you? If so, great. We know that things that are remote aren't going to feel good to you, but if you're like, well, it's remote and you're like, okay, are relationships important to you? And you're like, no, I actually really like working solo and I don't really need coworkers. Then it's like, huh, okay, why, why am I complaining about remote? It might actually be a great fit for me. Mm. So I think being clear about your values, the environment that actually really matters to you, then you get to be choosier with like, that thing doesn't work for me for this reason, but this Mm -hmm. one does. And then I think also you can be really proactive and I sometimes challenge clients to play like fun games Mm -hmm. of if you are not enjoying your work and let's say your top value is creativity, Mm -hmm. you can play the game of waking up every morning and saying, okay, I'm going to look for one opportunity to take an action in line with my value of creativity today, or success today is going to look like if I am able to apply creativity in this one meeting that I'm in. And when you proactively kind of psych yourself in of like, okay, I'm looking for ways that I have agency to Mm -hmm. create the things that are important to me. It can sometimes have a huge effect. I always like to be really clear that this will not work for everybody. And if the environment is not a good fit for you, I do not want you to stay. Right. So we want to be realistic about that too. But if the environment is okay and you really are looking for ways to re-engage, there are some fun games that you can play of finding the agency to create the things that are important to you at work. Yeah, on that note, I think it uh, overlaps with a couple different things in terms of, uh, in my mind, and I want you to weigh in on this, but in my mind, there's a couple different pieces. There's one piece, which is, I think you hear these messages around like, I found this perfect job and I feel like I'm never working. And I don't know how realistic that is, right? It's more like a scale of like 90% of my tasks or things that I have to do are awesome. 10% are not that awesome. So I think one piece of it is I, that messaging, I feel like at least personally, I've run into and been like, well, I don't really like that I have to take out the trash once every three weeks at this job. That doesn't seem fair. That seems stupid. Like I hate this place, you know? So there's like some piece of that. And then there is another piece that is basically, uh, I've had jobs before where I need them for whatever reason. And most of it's unpleasant, right? Like we're, we're slid pretty far down that scale. Um, but the difference for me for satisfaction was whether or not I was able to tap in those deeper meanings that we talked about. Like, okay, this is to build skills to transition into something else. I don't really like a huge percentage of this, but this is, this is necessary for my path. Uh, But I would be curious just how you think about some of those kinds of things. Uh, Maybe you completely disagree, but I feel like I I got a much more grounded position when I realized pretty much all jobs are going to have some percent of things that I dislike. If I can tap into and expand and amplify all the things that I do like and minimize those things, or at least know when I'm doing them, like, okay, this is the two hours of the week that I have to give these presentations that I don't want to give fine. 
yeah. the rest of it's great. Um, I'd be curious how you think about some of that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love the realistic aspect of that. Cause I think exactly as you say, there is so much like, I love my job and it doesn't feel like work and everything's great. Like I, I don't think, I don't know anyone personally who has that. (laughs) None of my clients have that. Um, So I think, I think the important part for me and what I have seen with clients is feeling like you have a choice. Hmm. So as long as there is agency to say, I am choosing this trade-off. I know that this thing is not a great fit for me long-term, or I know that 60% of it is stuff that I really don't enjoy. And yet I am actively choosing it for these reasons. I think that agency can make all the difference. And so if you're struggling against that, it becomes really difficult but if you say, you know, one of the, the most provocative things I like to say a lot is it's okay to have a boring job if it works for you. Mm-hmm. And it like riles people up. Some people are like, no, we cannot even say that out loud. Like that is terrible. We're going to have a disengaged workforce. And then the other half of the people are like, oh, can we, can we do that? That's awesome. <laughs> so I, I love letting people say like, I am choosing this boring job because I know that it fulfills my number one value of providing financial stability for my family Mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever it is, but actively choosing it makes all the difference. So yeah, absolutely agree. There's always going to be something that you don't enjoy. And as long as you get to choose those trade-offs, then I think that often has people feeling better about the situation. That makes so much sense to me because when I think about it, you know, you never hear anyone say like, oh, I have all these hundreds of thousands of other jobs that I could go to, but I hate this one. So I'll just choose to stay here. Like when people feel like they have that sense of agency, Mm -hmm. it has such a huge impact on, on just how you feel about your job and where you are and how engaged you are, even if you don't feel like it's the perfect fit. Like I feel like even if you think your job is boring to some degree, feeling like you have the agency to make some of these choices and trade-offs and whatnot is, is still more enjoyable. So it, like, even though the word is boring and that has negative connotations, the actual right. feeling or outcome is more positive because you know that you've been able to design things in a way that aligns with you. So I, that really resonated with me as something that makes yeah. uh, a ton of sense. I think one other piece too is oftentimes people feel like their job is their entire identity. Mm -hmm. And so when that happens and when you feel like all of your passion and purpose and meaning in life needs to come from your work, then it's very difficult if you're not enjoying work. But if you're saying like, I'm choosing this job that, you know, fulfills me to some extent. Mm -hmm. And then I also have these rich aspects to my life outside of work. I think that is also a much more realistic picture. And sometimes we don't get that side of the story of like, for some people, work is not everything and that is okay. It is okay if it is everything and you get your passion and purpose and meaning and drive, Mm -hmm. but it's also okay if you don't and you have an awesome life outside of work. Yeah, no, I think I like that you made that distinction of separating out your identities and who you are, even if it's a boring job, doesn't mean you're a boring person. And uh, I really love that you, you touched on like looking at the underlying values of maybe supporting my family with stability is a bigger value for me to stay in the boring job. And for others, what came to my mind was, you know, I know a lot of people in super high stress jobs, a boring job is like a dream job because you're not dealing with like (laughs) the high pressure and the stress. For some people, it might be like, yes, give me that boring job. I can just relax at work and because I feel confident and good about doing it. I know what I'm doing. I'm not trying to figure it out. So um, I like that you you give like more more options or help help them with their perception of how things can be. Yeah. I want people to do what they want. Mm. That is what my entire business is about. And it was interesting because I have a um, client who's in his sixties and he is looking at kind of this next phase of his career. And the messages that he's getting is 
well, you should just slow down. You should just relax. Like this is the time when you get to retire. And he's like, thank you. Everybody telling me what to do. What I would actually like to be doing is to continue contributing. Cause I feel like I've got another good, you know, 20, 25 years. And so I just, the more that we actually let people want what they want, Mm -hmm. I truly think that people will feel better. It will be a different experience of work. So yes, that's what I'm all about. Just like letting people want what they want. (laughs) Yeah. I've been pleasantly surprised how much this conversation has tapped into values as a source of figuring everything else out. Because I feel like if you think about uh, the backup you're going to get for career coaching, right? If you have no idea, at least for me, a naive take would be something along the lines of, well, here's how you, you make this concrete plan and navigate different steps in the ladder and make more money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But those things, uh, while you can focus on those things, don't necessarily provide good outcomes as far as happiness is concerned. So I'm, I'm really glad that we were able to have this sort of conversation focused on values because I, I keep hearing that, you know, as, as a core way to kind of figure out what you want, push back against external resources that are pushing you in other directions to be able to find the right work life balance, depending on what you want. All those things come back from these values. So I think it's important for people to know that, you know, career stuff is not just about pushing forward, doing more, pushing even harder, mm-hmm. finding the hundred percent perfect best job where you don't ever feel like you're working uh, because you know, historically like the younger version of me, Uh, like one of the things that you mentioned was people finding a job that they're okay with and just kind of might be boring a little bit or whatnot, but it's fine. It fits their life. When I was younger, I would be so confused. I'd be like, I don't know how you're doing this same thing for 20 years. Why aren't you pushing for the next level? Why aren't you doing the next thing? And don't you need more money? And now that a few years have passed, I'm like, uh, I think if you just take a step back and like get into alignment and that's what works for you and you make enough to live the lifestyle you want, then that's totally fine. And the other version of me, the younger version of me, that's like, go, 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 go. That guy's going to end up completely burnt out and just lost and confused and end up needing your help getting on track with a career that actually makes sense. So I'm just really glad that that's some of the messaging that's getting out there and and helping people catch these things um, and redirect their energies into ways that are going to produce useful happiness outcomes as opposed to just these hardcore like, here's how to get the promotion or whatever else. Right. Climb the ladder, strive, strive, strive. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been interesting. I've had three clients recently all say that career development is not as important to them. And talking about how like they actually wanted to be in a position where they continue getting better at what they do. Definitely there can be aspects of growth, but they actually don't want that external pressure built in of, okay, how are you getting to management? How are you getting to the next level? And I was just like, oh my gosh, maybe that's a thing we need to start saying out loud more too, that career development can look very different for different people. And maybe there's a a group of people that do not want that external, like climb the ladder. So I was, I I kind of feel like sometimes I get to hear all these conversations of like Mm -hmm. these one-off conversations. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, you're all saying the same thing. Maybe I'll just say it out loud now. (laughs) Let's see what kind of conversations. Yeah. So trying to, trying to spread more of the truth of how people are actually feeling so that we get a balanced Mm -hmm. feeling of career and what people want and what it looks like to to be fulfilled. Yeah. I think that's a great point because I think people feel like boxed in, they have to fit societal pressure and expectations that they're like, well, it only makes sense to move up the ladder. But when you take a step back, you know, yeah, there's nothing wrong with going for that next step if that's really what you want. But if you don't, there's nothing wrong with that either. It Mm -hmm. reminded me of like this story I heard about this, this fisherman, I don't know if you've heard the story about the fisherman, who just like, liked to fish, he provided for his family dinner with fish. And um, this guy comes along, he's like, Oh, you got to start a fish stop, build, blow it up if you want to provide more for your family. And so he's like, Oh, okay. And so he does this builds up this business, and then he franchises it. And then it's like this big hassle for like, 40 years of his life. And then when he retires, he goes back to fishing. <laughs> The thing that he enjoyed doing before, which is like 
you were doing that before and now you're going back to doing what you love before. And so it's just like, did he really need to do all of that? Not really necessarily his family was provided for, but this concept of, oh, I need to, because that's what is expected of me because I got to step up and provide for my family when in reality he already was. So (laughs) it's an interesting story. So true. So true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did want to ask like one other question that came to my mind is I think the thing that stops people in like even exploring is fear. (laughs) Obviously fear is a big stopping factor for people um, because they're like, well, I got to provide for my family. What if I don't like make enough money and all of this thing and they feel trapped. So it's like, what would you say to those people that feel fear to even explore or even entertain the idea? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is so reasonable. That's -hmm. what I want to say (laughs) first and foremost, (laughs) like, you know, a lot of people, yeah, talk to me and they're like, I feel scared. Um, People sometimes have this like negative connotation of like, I'm risk averse. Mm -hmm. And I would love for us to have a different experience of that fear and that risk averseness. And um, I use the phrase that, that one of my coaches says a lot is, self-honoring. Mm. Like actually when we are being risk averse, we are honoring something that's important to us. Mm-hmm. So we're honoring our financial stability. Mm-hmm. We are honoring our desire to like, you know, take good care of the people around us. Mm-hmm. We are honoring our desire to do meaningful work. And so I think we get to absolutely like listen to the fear and the risk averseness And I don't want you to do anything that feels like, oh my gosh, I have to go be this kind of job that is not going to provide for my family. That is not going to be a good fit for you. Mm -hmm. So kind of use that, that fear as almost like intentionally design it into the process, right? Don't let it get you fully stopped. Let's, let's let yourself do the experimentation. But if the fear is saying, I, you know, want to make sure I can bring my skills of what I've been doing. Okay. That seems reasonable. Um, I want to make sure that I'm not putting myself in a position where I don't feel financially stable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Let's design that into the process. So if we can kind of honor the parts of fear that are useful and then get into just like the light experimentation without feeling like you need to make any bigger steps that are, um, too big for you without needing to burn it all down. I think that's how it's best to like honor the fear, learn what we can from it, actually honor the things that are important. Mm -hmm. And then let us do that little bit of experimentation and dreaming. Mm. Yeah. I wanted to chime in on that note, having done a burn the bridges type of thing (laughs) with some fear involved. Uh, one of the things that actually helped me a lot now, now the plan that I did was not, I don't advise this, but one of the things that really helped me get past some of the fear of leaving this career path that I did not like was actually getting into the details. Like you were just talking about and figuring out, okay, what are the fears? What is causing these instead of this whole nebulous, like, I just, I don't know what I'm doing and I want to do something else. I hate this, but ah, so I got into, okay, I'm afraid I will not be able to provide for myself. Okay, great. What is the timeline that I need in terms of finances? So that was one of the steps is saving X number of dollars and knowing exactly what that number was instead of just going, oh, I, well, maybe I can figure it out. No, I probably can't. Well, I don't know. You know, being really concrete with those steps helped me and the fear was still there, yep. but it was a lot easier to overcome when I had, okay, this is exactly what I need to survive. Next thing. What if I don't get a job in this other career path that I want to try for uh, okay, well, I've, I've already budgeted myself three months, six months, whatever else. I know how much time I have. Yep. What's, the, what's the fallback plan? If it doesn't work, well, I have experience in this other realm. It mm-hmm. wasn't super hard for me to get this first job. So, you know, if I build in an extra month of budget for job searching, if absolutely necessary, I can probably make it work. Anyway, I just wanted to highlight kind of some of what you were saying, which is getting into the details and figuring out the actual plan can help mitigate the fear or at least bring it down to the point where you can just deal with it and kind of process it yep. and have it be part of the process instead of going, it's just, it's just too much. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I think that's the part that can grow just more oh, and yeah. more and more is just not knowing and not getting into the details right? because it is just this big amorphous block of 
but but how am I going to figure it out? Well, if you figured out before, or at least as much of it as you can and set up, you know, a plan contingencies and whatnot, then you'll know. Yep. Um, so just echoing yep. what you said. Yeah. I think, I think it's right that like the nebulousness of it is what can get, just get so overwhelming. <laughs> so yes, the more we can define and the more we can clarify, the more we can get specific, then it starts to be less freaky rather than, yeah, the giant nebulous, like, I don't know what I'm up to. Like, yeah, that is scary. and doesn't help you move forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you could always fall back and be an Uber driver. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, if you want to pursue your passion, this is my thought. But uh, anyways, this has been a really awesome conversation, Lindsay. Uh, Was there anything else you wanted to add or is there anything you'd like to plug before we wrap up our show today? Yeah. So one thing that I am super excited about getting to offer the world. So Mm -hmm. I've been doing the work that I do for be five years in July. Mm -hmm. And I have mostly worked with people one-on-one up until this point. And now what I'm up to is I have no longer have the hours of the day to work with everybody that I want to impact. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to be offering a self-service version of what I do. It's going to be self-paced And it is specifically designed for people who are in a job search Mm -hmm. and wanting to make a decision that feels really good to them. So helping them get clarity, helping them get confidence, knowing how to assess opportunities for fit. And so that course is called Job Search Synergy. And it's going to be available on May 10th. So if that feels like a place where any of your listeners are, Mm -hmm. I would love to support you in just making a a decision and having a job search that actually feels aligned Mm -hmm. with what you are looking for. Awesome. I love it. Actually, I I think I'm going to suggest that to my partner. (laughs) 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 You got one point. (laughs) Uh, but yeah, yeah no, that that's great, and I also think that's yeah, how you're going to make a bigger impact in the world, um, because we can only work with so many people one on one. So yeah. now you yeah. can help tons of people. It's awesome. Right. Yeah, super excited. So yeah. thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Well, thank you again for being on our show. It's been a pleasure. You can check out more content at howtohappy.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date on the videos. We've also got a Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook that you can check out. Reflect, take action, and enjoy life. See you next time.